Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mick. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on custom collection view layouts. It's time to tackle a brand new layout. And this time, we're gonna look at stretchy headers, which are becoming increasingly popular. We're gonna base our implementation on the DIY Skills for Kids app. In this episode, you'll implement the basic stretchy header layout, as well as use UI Collection View Flow layout for the first time in a series. You'll learn how to identify the layout attributes of headers, as well as understand that it's just as easy to manipulate a Collection View supplementary views as it is its cells. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video. As the user scrolls, the header will stretch to fill the gap between the top of the collection view and the top of the first cell in the first section. When the user releases scrolling, the header will snap back to its original size and position. The approach we're gonna to take to implementing the stretchy header is pretty straightforward. As the user scrolls the collection view, its content offset property is continually being updated to reflect the changes. All we need to do each time that content offset property changes is increase the height of the header by the Y value of the content offset and then adjust the Y value of the header's origin by the same amount to make sure it's positioned correctly. And this will give the illusion that the header is being stretched as the user scrolls. If you intend to manipulate the layout attributes of a header or a footer, as we're going to do here, then it's important that you understand how to identify them, since they're not separated out from the layout attributes of cells or other supplementary views. The place to start is with the represented element kind property on UI Collection View layout attributes. This is an optional and will return nil if the represented element category property is equal to UI collection element category cell. If you successfully unwrap the property, then it will either contain UI collection element kind header or UI collection element kind footer. And for the purposes of this layout, we're only interested in the former. It's also worth noting that only UI collection view flow layout and its subclasses support headers and footers. UI collection view layout has no support for either headers or footers. If you go ahead and run the sample app that's provided with this video, you'll find a pretty common layout. We've got a header up top, and then we've got our items or cells directly below. And this is pretty common, and you see it a lot with UI Table View, but this is in fact backed by UI Collection View. And the main problem with this type of layout is if the user pulls down on the Collection View or scrolls down, you see that the header moves with the content as you would expect, but this leaves this ghastly gap at the top where you can see through to anything that's underneath. And aesthetically, this isn't very pleasing. Ideally, what should happen is as the user scrolls, the header should stretch and continue to fill that gap. And that's exactly what we're gonna look at doing in this video. So stop the sample app and jump back to Xcode. And the first thing we need to do is to create our custom layout. So if we right click on the layout group, and choose new file, and then choose iOS source Swift file, click next. And we're gonna name this one DIY layout, and then hit create. Once the file's open, we need to update our import to UI kit, as that's where UI collection view and all its classes live. And then we can add our class declaration. So we're gonna name it the same as the file, DIY layout. And this time we're going to subclass UI collection view flow layout. This is because the flow layout achieves almost everything that we want it to. And we just need to go in and make a couple of subtle tweaks. Now we've done that, we need to tell our collection view to use our class rather than the stock class. So we just open our main dot storyboard and then in the document outline, make sure we've got the collection view open and find the collection view flow layout object. We can open the inspector pane and then in the identity inspector, we just change class to DIY layout class, which is our custom class. And then just to make sure everything's still working as expected, we can do a quick build and run and see that nothing's changed, which is what we want. So jump back to Xcode 
and we can start implementing our layout. So we'll open DIY Layout Swift. I'm just going to close the inspector pane. And we just need to override two methods this time. The first one is should invalidate layout for bounds change. And we're going to return true. And basically what this means is that the layout will be relayed out, if you like, with each scroll rather than just happening when the collection view is first displayed. Almost like a continuous relay out. And we want this because we need to know how much the user has scrolled as the user scrolls so we can stretch the header by the appropriate amount. And then above that, we want to override the second method, which is layout attributes for elements in rect. Now, as I said before, UI collection view flow layout gives us kind of 99% of what we need. So rather than create our layout attributes from scratch, as we did in the previous videos, we're actually going to hand off to Super and let them do the work, and then we'll just use what's returned. So we'll create our layout attributes variable, but this time we're going to call Super layout attributes for elements in rect, passing in a rect, and then we're just going to cast those as an array of UI collection view layout attributes. Okay, it seems I've got the override keyword twice there. So I'll just remove that first one. And then we just need to make sure that we return those layout attributes. So the next thing that we need is we need to understand how far the user has scrolled. And we can get that from the content offset of the collection view. So let content uh, let offset equals collection view dot content offset. And then we're only really interested in manipulating the header if the y value of the offset is less than zero, which means they're pulling down rather than pushing up. So if offset.y is less than zero, we can go in and do what we need to do. Then the next thing that we need to get a hold of is we need to calculate the delta. And um, basically this is just going to be the absolute value of the offset y. So let delta y equals absolute value offset y. And now we've got that, we can loop through all the attributes in our attributes away. Now the layout attributes have a property called represented element kind, which will tell us whether it's a section header or a section footer. But this is optional because it's only available on UI collection view flow layout. So we need to unwrap that. And now we've got that element kind, we can make sure that we're working with a header, which is what we're looking for. And now we know that we're definitely working with the header, we can start manipulating the attributes. And what we first want to manipulate is the frame, so we'll get a handle to that. And then of that frame, we want to change the height. And we want to set this to the max of either zero or the header reference size dot height plus the delta y. And this basically makes sure that as we pull down, the header grows, but if we scroll up, the header will stay the same. And header reference size is actually a property on UI collection view flow layout, and we'll be setting that in the controller shortly. The next thing we need to change is the origin of the frame, specifically the y. And we're going to use this cg rect get min y function on the frame. And then we're going to minus the delta. And that'll move us back enough so that it fills the gap left by the scroll. And then we can just reset the frame on the attributes to our new frame. And that's it for our custom layout at this point. The last thing we need to do is go set that header reference size. And we'll do that in the controller. So if we jump over to schedule view controller. And just above where we set the item size in view did load, we'll set the header reference size. And we're going to set this to CG size. The width is the existing width value, which is the width of the collection view. And the height is 180, which matches the height that we've already designed to in Interface Builder. So with that, if we build and run, we see that as we pull down the header, now stretches to fill that gap. That's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we like to leave off with a challenge. 
The current implementation of the stretchy header is pretty good as is, but it does have one flaw. It's not yet taken the collection views content inset property into account, which could become an issue if you wanted to display some content at the top of a collection view, like a custom navigation bar, or simply wanted to move the header out from underneath the status bar. So your challenge this time is to update the layout so that it takes the collection views content inset property into account when calculating the frame of the header. As always, you'll find all the details in the challenge document, but do be sure to give it a go yourself before reaching for the solution. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.